in medicine, we know that a simple lifestyle change that includes 30 minutes of walking a day, a healthy Mediterranean diet, and three sessions a week of mindfulness meditation can not only prevent the aging of chromosomes, but actually reverse it. We did a project uh, published in 2010 with Kevin Kampscher and Judy Heerwagen of the GSA in which we measured using quantitative biological measures, the stress response, on two different kinds of measures. And we also asked questions about how people felt in old, dark, dank office space compared to new, beautiful, light, airy office space with beautiful views. And we found on two separate measures that the stress response was lowered in the people in the new office space. And they weren't consciously aware of it when we asked the questions subjectively. Why is that important? Because we know that if you can lower the stress response to that amount, to the amount that we saw, you actually have a healthier person, a more productive person, a happier person. This is the new frontier of medicine, environmental health, and sustainable design. We are bringing human health and well being outcomes into all those disciplines. In medicine, we're bringing the environment, the built and the natural environment, into the consideration of health beyond the absence of disease. So how do we create environments, whether built or natural, to enhance well-being? It's really hard to tell somebody to go home and meditate if there, there's noise, crowding, foul odors, mazes through which they have to get to go to their home, if their home is dark and unpleasant with no greenery. If you put green spaces in there, it helps people to get into this positive emotional state, which enhances health. And that's where designers can help and can work as true partners with healthcare providers to create a healthy landscape at all scales. Music